So NPR put out this article today. We're not going to read the whole thing, but we're going to read parts of it. And they're really upset at how the poor teachers, the poor, poor, poor teachers are being treated. You guys notice that any time we talk about education now with the news, that it's not actually about the students or how much the students are learning. It's all about the teachers and their mental health and how do we take better care of these teachers? And you know why that is, right? That's because of the teachers unions. That this has nothing to do with educating students. It has nothing to do with providing uh, robust environments that support learning. It has nothing to do with any of that. It only has to do with taking care of the poor abused teachers. Daniel, oh my gosh, Daniel says, my three months, my three months just expired, just went for the annual. Keep it up. Thank you, Daniel, for the support. I really appreciate that. So this article, they say educators are taking blows from all sides and they sometimes feel like no one is hearing them. Well, given every news story I read about teachers talks about the poor, poor, poor teachers, I'm not sure that's entirely true, but sure. This is a key finding of the big new COVID-19 era study from the American Psychological Association Task Force. Responses collected between July 2020 and June 2021 came from nearly 15,000 school personnel from psychologists to bus drivers in all 50 states. As part of the survey, educators contributed around 7,000 written responses. I read every single one of those 7,000, and I had to stop every 20 minutes just tearing up and crying about how powerful they were. Okay, I call bullshit. I call absolute bullshit on that. <clears throat> And the reason I call bullshit is I, I did my dissertation about workplace bullying. I know what it feels like to read and hear sad sob stories of actual abuse and harassment at work. And I didn't stop to tear up every 20 minutes. Not that it wasn't sad and not that it didn't impact me because it absolutely did. I, I've often said my, my dissertation was like the most soul-sucking experience in my life just because I had to hear horrible story after horrible story after horrible story. And it really did impact me. But when you're researching a topic, you don't tear up and cry every 20 minutes. All that proves is that you're not uh, detached from your research at all. Patrice says, remember to mount that like button. Thank you, Patrice, for that. Here are some key findings. 59% of teachers, 58% of school administrators, 48% of support staff, and 38% of school psychologists and social workers report being victimized in some way. All right, I want to know how they define victimized. When it comes to physical violence, support staff like school resource officers, aides, and even bus drivers were more likely to report physical aggression. Now, I want to be clear. I don't think there's any place for physical aggression in schools. However, let's just be blunt for a moment. The public schools are the closest that your average child is ever going to get to being in prison in their lives without actually going to prison. The public schools are the next closest thing. And so if the public schools are cultivating this generation of children that is lashing out and engaging in physical violence, can, can, we, really, like, can we really not blame the schools for that? I mean, come on, if this is a pervasive problem, if if this is if this is just happening everywhere, if there's so much physical violence in the public schools, especially with all of the social emotional learning that's going on, then how is it that the school isn't causing this in the first place? Are these kids just born violent? Hmm, I don't know. Specifically, 22% of staff, 18% of psychologists, 15% of administrators, 14% of teachers reported acts of violence. Um, but that's actually not what I want to talk about. <clears throat> Verbal aggression is more likely to come from parents. Now, if we're being a little bit more hinged into reality, we could talk about how the teachers unions and the Biden administration worked with the school board association to label parents who go against them as domestic terrorists. We could talk about how the FBI has started an entire task force specifically to monitor Parents at school board meetings. Verbal aggression, the task force agreed, is in some ways an even tougher issue to manage. Look at, look at this. Even the American Psychological Association says, oh, look, there's all this physical violence in school. There's physical violence in schools. But you know what's more important? 
it's the verbal abuse that teachers have to undergo from parents at school board meetings. That is actually the more important problem on our plate is parents at school board meetings who disagree with us. The survey's definition of verbal aggression goes far beyond an unpleasant conversation. It includes threats, slurs, bullying, online harassment. I'm sure they include mean tweets in there. And sexual harassment. I mean, and by the way, I'm not condoning sexual harassment. I generally think the rest of that is bullshit, though. Administrators were the ones most often caught in the crossfires like principals. 42% of administrators said they experienced this behavior from parents. Well, golly gee, if half of the parents in your school district are verbally aggressive to you, probably because you're not doing your effing job, I would say that's more of an indication of you and not from them. Sam says, former teacher, I stopped caring about my colleagues and unions when they started to exclude parents from the education process. That is exactly correct. Exactly correct. And yeah, Breaking Headlines is right too. They're more worried about themselves than the students. Yes, they are. And we're going to prove that in a second. Meanwhile, 33% of teachers reported verbal aggression from students and 29% of parents. To be honest, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. If if teachers are only experiencing verbal aggression from 29% of parents, we're not doing our jobs. Significantly more. There should be significantly more verbal aggression against teachers than only from... That's like less than one third. Come on, guys, we can we can do better than this, guys. We can make bullying teachers great again because they fucking deserve it. I'm sorry, not the good ones. I'm sure your school has good ones, but I'm sure your school has bad ones, too. And most of your kids are being taught by the bad ones. Most of your kids are being taught by teachers who are teaching them crazy bullshit things about history that are not real. They're teaching them crazy things about their gender that is not real. They are teaching their they are teaching your children to be racist. They are teaching your children to engage in stereotypes. They are teaching your children to judge people by their immutable characteristics. They are t- they are practicing psychology without a license on your children. I don't think I'm out of line in saying that if only 29% of teachers are experiencing verbal aggression from parents, we need to do better. We need to do better. Nat D says, just tuned in, but the way they are treating Dave Rubin is disgusting. I've only seen a little bit of this, Nat D. I've, I've seen a tiny little bit because some of it showed up in my Twitter feed, but I absolutely agree with you. I absolutely agree. I'm going to say this, though. I was calling out the gay-hating bullshit over a year ago. Do you guys remember this? Right after Biden got elected, I started calling out that I was seeing more of the conservative right engaging in this gay hating bullshit and i started calling it out immediately i was like the gay haters are rising the gay haters are rising the gay haters are rising i'm gonna be honest dave rubin was one of those people who were telling me that he didn't actually see it betty sees it now and i don't take any pride in that but i called this out over a year ago i saw it as a growing trend and i turned out to be right yet again no one will ever admit it but i was right yep i was right (laughs) I'm telling you guys, I don't just do this for my help, man. It, it, it gives me no joy to say that, but I was absolutely correct on that. Sarah, a high school teacher in Washington State who was not a part of the study, says the hostility from parents and other community members is the worst she's seen in a decade of teaching. I don't get paid enough to put up with this kind of verbal abuse. Then leave. Then leave. No one would be upset. Stop teaching. I don't know how much longer I can really exist in this space when I'm being constantly attacked. The customer is always right kind of response. And I just, I just sit and take it. I just sit and take it because I'm a teacher. Uh Uh-huh. All right. Sam, I think this is a wonderful suggestion. Sam says we need a Carlin was right tip jar. I think that's a great suggestion, Sam. I appreciate that. A, t- a parent complaint. Oh, oh, check this out. Check this out. This is this is the stunning and brave act that got her so much verbal abuse from these parents. She thinks Zoom school made things worse because parents can walk by over here and and take things out of context. It's like they're looking over my shoulder and auditing how I do my job. So Sarah, 
is upset because the parents of the children she is teaching could actually monitor what she was teaching when when she was teaching on Zoom. And she didn't like that. She didn't like the parents actually seeing what she was teaching. Huh. Huh. If only we had cameras in classrooms all the time so that parents could always log on to a direct feed from their child's class and see what the teachers are teaching. If only we had that. What a crazy idea. What a crazy idea. But it gets better. A parent complained about her Black Lives Matter t-shirt. She was wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt and a parent complained and she considers that to be verbal abuse. Parents rejected her request that students follow a mask policy. Wasn't it? I'm sorry. Wasn't this Zoom school? So the teacher, the teacher requested that the students wear a mask while completing Zoom classes. And parents were like, no, that's stupid. And the teacher considers that to be, be verbal abuse. Okay. Another parent berated her on the phone for more than 20 minutes after she was called to do a routine welfare check on a student who wasn't handing in assignments. After that call, I went and I cried in a colleague's office for a while. And then when I got back to my classroom, I missed a call from my administrator because the parent had then hung up with me and immediately called the administrator to report me for targeting their child. Well, it makes me wonder what exactly did she say on that call? Because I'm, I, I don't believe at all. If she's wearing BLM, uh, if she's wearing BLM t-shirts to her class, and she's ordering students to wear zo- masks on Zoom, do you think that she just called and was perfectly delightful for just a routine wellness check? I don't. So what did you say on that call, Sarah? What exactly, what exactly did you say on that call? But more importantly. I want to go back to, I mean, we've already touched on many ways in which this is unhinged from reality, but here's another one. A quarter of parents say their child has seen a mental health specialist during the pandemic. That poll found that 60% of visits have occurred in the last year. More than a quarter of U.S. patients said their children have seen a mental health specialist over the course of the pandemic. The findings based on a nationally representative report from the University of Michigan uh, Children's Hospital, blah, blah, blah. Let's see. The group drew their conclusions from data collected between all these things, blah, blah, blah. The pandemic caused significant stress and social disruption for kids that likely exacerbated these problems as we're seeing a growing number of young people face mental health concerns. This places a heavier burden on parents, healthcare providers, and other trusted adults in their lives to be aware of the potential warning signs. Now, the reason I bring this up, and we're not going to read this whole article because we've got other stuff to do today, is that the teachers' unions were instrumental in all of this. The teachers' unions of these poor, 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 just abused, put upon, frontline teachers. The, de- the teachers' unions are at fault for all of this. Every single one. Because the teachers' unions are the ones where that we're pushing to have virtual school. Virtual school has led to the most massive amount of learning loss that we've probably experienced in generations. It will take us decades, if not longer, <coughs> to recover from the learning loss that has occurred during the pandemic. But that's not all. So the teachers unions are responsible for all, for virtual learning in school for as long as they could push it. This has been covered extensively on this channel. There were actually teachers unions in Chicago specifically where the head of the teachers union was talking about how irresponsible it would be to go back to in-person learning and in-person class while she was on vacation in Puerto Rico. While she was on vacation in effing Puerto Rico. She was talking about how it's just too dangerous to leave the house. But that's not all. The teachers unions have also been instrumental in keeping students masked. And I said from the very beginning of the pandemic, forcing children whose brains have not fully developed to wear a thing over the thing that they express themselves with, which is their mouth, we express ourselves with our mouth, is going to create de- like devastating, devastating 
mental health impact. You guys can go back and check me on this. I was screaming about this in March of 2020. Now it's going to affect the mental health of everyone. It's going to affect the, the mental health of adults, but it is especially going to impact the mental health of children because the amount that we use, that we express ourselves and how we express ourselves is directly related to our self-esteem. It is directly related to how we perceive ourselves. So this would have been obvious to anyone with even a basic understanding of psychology that masking children for two, over two years, forcing them to wear these things over their faces all day, every day when they were never in danger from this virus, which we now know for certain, check with the CDC for all your virus and vaccine related questions, of course, because they might have different information. But they were never susceptible to this virus in the amount that adults were, according now to the CDC, YouTube. And, they, and the teachers' unions pushed masking them anyway. The teachers' unions of these poor, abused teachers, when we are hinged into reality, are responsible for all of this. But no, no. They are poor, and they are put upon. And we can't ever say this out loud, because they're teachers, the noblest of professions. No. Teaching is not a noble profession anymore. Maybe it was at one time, but it is not anymore. Now, almost every single teacher teaching today has been indoctrinated into woke leftist critical race theory, social justice ideology. And where do they get indoctrinated? They get indoctrinated in college, in the schools of education. And what that means is that to fix the public schools, we not only need to train an entire new generation of teachers. We also need to train an entire new generation of teacher trainers. What that means is that it is incumbent upon all of us to bring ourselves around to the perspective that the public schools in their current form are not fixable. They are not fixable in any way. It would take a minimum of two generations, two generations, and quite frankly, a lot of luck thrown in there as well in order to make any dent in how bad the public schools are doing. And it's, it's not even a matter of fixing policy. People think that this is people think this is a matter of passing critical race theory laws. No, it's not. It's not a matter of passing anti-CRT bills. It's not. Because even if you pass the strongest anti-CRT bill in every state, even if you pass the strongest education transparency bill in every state that forces teachers to put their educational materials online, even if you put cameras in every public school classroom, which of course you guys know is something I've advocated for quite strongly, even if you do all of those things, the public schools will not be fixed because it is not the institution, it's the teachers. And this is a fact that people need to face up to. We do not have the teachers. We do not have the personnel. We do not have, not only do we not have the teachers, we don't have the teacher trainers. That's just reality. And that's why I was more than a little excited to see the town of Croydon in New Hampshire cut the school budget in half. Can we all just get a slow clap for the town of Croydon? Cutting the school budget in half. Defunding the schools is the only way this is ever going to get fixed. I know this is scary for a lot of people. I understand that. But this is the only, this is the fastest and most effective way to fix this problem.